Hello, everybody. I think I'm doubly blessed. I'm both young enough to be part of this first ever online general council and old enough in 1968 to be at Sydenham Street, Kingston for the last time the council met in a church sanctuary. 54 United Church years later, here we are, hunched over our separate computers, yet amazingly together before this year's theme, Who Do You Say That I Am? The most down those years, that might seem a no-brainer, but how do we respond today? It was in the memory wing of what we used to call an old folks home. Joyce and I were at the piano singing old hymns that still resonate old hearts. Suddenly, to the astonishment of his wife, who visited every day, a former Salvation Army captain who hadn't spoken for months, stood up straight, the only one standing, and sang every verse of Jesus Loves Me. For a few moments, anyway, the world came back into focus for him, who he was, the way he'd always walked. Jesus did that for him, right before our eyes. That's what Jesus does. He did it in London in the darkest days of 1942. Two years before, the National Portrait Gallery had shipped its precious masters away for safekeeping, and curator Kenneth Clark, bombs still falling, decided to bring one painting back each month. He invited suggestions for first choice. Letters poured in. The runaway favorite was Titian's Jesus in the Garden with Mary. Thousands jammed sidewalks, hungry to see it again. Yes, because it was ageless art, but also because in that dark time, Jesus was a window bringing light. It's there in history from Raphael to William Karelik. Portraits of Jesus are road markers in the history of Western art. Not one of them, of course, catches Jesus whole. They're just puzzling reflections in a mirror. But all are recognizably Jesus, a window for Christians that for centuries has shed light. But beyond the portraits, for me, Jesus himself is a window through which, like the old captain, everything that really matters comes into focus. All my little mind can hold about the unreachable mystery of God, a face for the loving Christ spirit hovering over the birth waters of creation and in the healing earth music that accompanies all our days. For Christians, that spirit walked the world in Jesus. In Canada, we're blessed to have neighbors and workmates who have other windows, other glimpses of mystery, which without them we'd never know. But my window is Jesus. He brings the way I'm called to walk into focus. On the way to Jerusalem, as Mark says, Jesus ahead, friends lagging behind him, just follow in their ears. In my ears too, on visiting afternoons in Hamilton 70 years ago, almost physically dragging reluctant me up reeking warehouse stairs where we stored old people then and still do. Follow, the same word still calls me to stand with Ganawaki mothers staring down Canadian army tear gas near Montreal, to stand with LGBTs waiting for human rights law to include sexual orientation, to carry 500 general council signatures to a United Church prisoner of conscience in pre-democracy Taiwan, to go further than I've ever been before, further than I ever really want to go. So, Jesus as a window is for me a useful image, just as my morning window brings the blinding sun onto my chair here in a ray of light I can see and lays it warm on my hand, so Jesus does that for me. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, that's how I pray. 
no matter so-called progressives erase Jesus' name from prayers and benedictions, even the peace of Christ often shrunk to a mumbled peace and a wave. No matter, Jesus is my window. Like people who identified themselves in Caesar's world by saying Jesus is Lord. Like the learned Karl Barth in his farewell tour at Princeton Chapel, asked to sum up his faith, I still hear his quiet answer, Jesus loves me, this I know. Like Bart, like the old Sally Ann captain, it's through the Jesus window that I remember who I am, whose I am, where I've walked and why, and with whom. Through that window, through Jesus Christ our Lord, I see the way still beckoning where already Jesus is out ahead, calling to me and his church, come on, for God's sake, and for the sake of the loved and breaking world. Amen. Thanks for listening.